Hello. Life presents us all with experiences and circumstances that motivate us and that also help to channel our lives into what they will be. If we are raised in a stable home with support and high expectations, or if we grow up with insecurity and trauma and neglect, the options we imagine for our lives will be different. And the hope we have for realizing those dreams will be different as well. I was fortunate to grow up in a stable home and also to have the opportunity to witness some of the challenges of others with more difficult beginnings. Possibly because of this, I've always been a person that needed to have a sense of purpose in my life, to feel like I was making a positive impact in the lives of others. After about 20 years of self-employment as a licensed residential builder, at my brother's encouragement, I went back to school, hoping to find a vocation that might provide me greater opportunities to be of service and to alleviate suffering in the world. Um, after a very meandering educational path, I ended up becoming a licensed professional counselor, hoping this would afford me some opportunities to be a greater service. I began counseling young people who were in the juvenile court system and very early into that started to be able to see the external things that were impacting these young people's lives. Most of the young people I was working with came from single parent homes, typically with absent fathers and overworked or overstressed mothers, many of whom were dealing with substance abuse or mental health issues of their own. They often came from neighborhoods that were economically stressed. Uh, where there was a general sense that there wasn't much of a way out. They often also needed to make money to meet some of their basic needs, which led them to exploring the, ed the economic opportunities that were available in their communities, which typically meant selling drugs or stealing, which in turn got them into the criminal justice system where I got to meet them. Counseling was useful for some of these issues, but I started to realize that some of the greatest barriers were those systemic issues that kept them from growing and flourishing. For instance, you're 16 years old and you have a felony or two on your record and it's 2008 and the bottom has fallen out of the economy, even if you've practiced your job interview skills and written a lovely resume and have motivation to work, the likelihood of getting a job was next to zero. Many of the young people that I was working with were super motivated to work and to earn money. As a matter of fact, as I said, many of them had been hustling the streets since they were quite little to earn money for their basic needs. So motivation and a sense of purpose weren't foreign to them, but the opportunities to pick up motivation and purpose to work in a, in a venue that would give them greater opportunities in the future was lacking. So I decided that talk therapy was not gonna be enough, and that I wanted to change my focus to trying to address some of the tangible systemic problems that these young people were facing. Having been uh, a licensed builder for most of my life, I thought I would create a business that would provide these young people job opportunities and also maybe a safe and caring environment with stability where they could grow and, and thrive. I initially thought that I would uh, start a business 
I had an interest in alternative energy as well as building, and I thought I would do solar photovoltaic panel installation. <laughs> Many of the young people that I was working with were kinesthetic learners, had a hard time in school just sitting and listening to somebody, needed to work with their hands. If they were in my counseling office, they might be taking my stapler apart while they were talking to me in a counseling session. And I thought that solar panel installation would provide kinesthetic hands-on work and also some more technical job skills that might be useful for them for building more expansive lives in the future. I spent two years trying to put this business together. And then I ran up against child labor law which if I had had a lick of sense, I would have looked into at the very beginning. <laughs> but I'm a muddler and not a planner. <laughs> Under the age of 18, you can't employ a young person to be on a roof or a ladder or to use power tools. So pretty much every aspect of solar panel installation <laughs> kind of fell in those three categories. Um, so that job possibility fell apart. About that time, I had purchased a box of fancy chocolates for my wife online. Those who know me know that I'm a congenital word player. And I joked to her, maybe that's what I could do. I could make chocolates. I could call it confections with convictions because I'd be working with young people who had felony records. <laughs> it was one of a dozen dumb jokes in the course of a given day but it stuck in the back of my head, so be careful what you joke about. <laughs> I never had any life dream or slightest notion of being a chocolatier in my life. But this notion seemed like it might have some promise. So I started studying about chocolate. I took an online class from the Ecole Institute in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is about as good to learn how to make chocolates as taking an online basketball class would be. <laughs> uh, you learn a lot of the rules and the theory, but the moves are a totally different deal. <laughs> um, and then I took a couple of hands-on classes, one at the uh, French Pastry School in Chicago, and one at a place called L.A. Burdicks in Walpole, New Hampshire. And while I was doing this, I started uh, playing with chocolates and experimenting in my own home kitchen and discovered that uh, working with chocolate sort of unleashed a creative streak in me that I didn't know that I had. Uh, in our shop right now, we have some, something like 93 different flavors in the case. <laughs> so I can't control myself. <laughs> uh, in 2008, I, I bought a building that was in need of great repair and spent the next couple of years gutting and remodeling it. And in December of 2010, opened the chocolate shop called Confections with Convictions. Uh, since that time, we've had over 28 young people working at the shop, uh, some just doing 40 to 60 hours of community service, and others uh, have been there for many years. I think most of the young people who have worked there have found some of their own sense of purpose in holding a steady job, taking pride in their work, taking care of legal obligations, and taking care of themselves. Uh, one young man discovered that he loves being a chocolatier and working with chocolate. He's become super skilled and is one of my main staff there right now and does beautiful work. I think he actually does, is better at working with chocolate with his hands than anybody that I studied with. He hopes to have a chocolate business of his own someday. And he recently had a daughter and uh, is highly motivated to provide a safe and stable childhood for her. Another young woman who uh, came to my shop came to us pregnant and homeless and having uh, dropped out of high school. She used the foundation of regular employment uh, to get her GED, get an, get an apartment for herself, 
uh, complete an associate's degree, find a job in that was more suited to her own particular life dreams and purposes, and is just about to complete her bachelor's in business administration. And, yeah. And to top that off, she came to me this Tuesday and said, uh, super excited, she had just purchased her third rental property. So, uh, not all of the stories are linear of what's happened to people who have been in our shop, but there are some that I say, think are equally profound. One young man, at the end of our first year, we had sort of a go around about what did you learn, what was your experience like this first year in the shop. And this young man had lost three of his best friends to gun violence ah, here in Kalamazoo uh, during that course of that year. And he, and he said to me, if I hadn't been working here, I would have gone to the streets with my friends. I'd probably be dead by now. So the simple purpose of having a steady job, having to get up every day and go to work, may have for that young man literally been a lifesaver. My own mother, unexpectedly, my 89-year-old mother currently, uh, volunteers, committed herself to volunteering at the shop on a daily basis. Um, and she has found a renewed sense of purpose in being of service there provides a stable force and has been a loving grandmotherly presence for staff and customers alike. So my little experiment in trying to find purpose in my own life has opened doors for other people to find their own service and purpose too. Dozens of community volunteers uh, have come to the shop and volunteered in one capacity or the other from mentoring and tutoring to actually working with chocolate and working with the young people who are there, intending the register, and they found their own purpose and service as well. Many of our customers frequent the shop because it affords them a tangible opportunity to support young people who are trying to make positive changes in their lives. This work has made me profoundly aware of my privilege in this culture, and also of the benefits of having had a safe and secure childhood in a safe neighborhood. It's also opened my heart to the stories and experiences of those who didn't have that early experience. The last eight years have not always been easy. Uh, two of the young people who have worked at our shop have gone to prison. A couple others have simply disappeared. Um, being on this journey means to not only share in the joys and accomplishments, but also in the constraints and crises and trauma of poverty in the streets. Living a life fueled by purpose uh, provides opportunities for great joy and deep sorrow. But knowing that I have the opportunity to be a positive influence in the lives of, of others and to create a safe and caring environment for other people to develop and explore their own life purpose sustains me through the tough times. I am blessed to, paraphrasing the words of Gandhi, be a bit of the change that I wish to see in the world. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you,